Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks in PyTorch with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to extract weights from PyTorch, and then just for fun, we're going to use those weights and calculate the neural network from scratch. So let's just jump right in and calculate some weights. I have the code here. We're going to go ahead and run this in Colab, though, so that I am able to show you the actual weight calculations. We'll run this bit up here first. Weight initialization assigns random weights when the neural network is first created. I describe here the process for the Xavier weight initialization, which is popular in a number of papers and was also the primary way that TensorFlow initialized weights. By default, PyTorch uses a uniform random distribution that is based somewhat on the size of the layer. I've got a link here that describes it. The other one that I've used is the Xavier and often called the Glorat weight initialization algorithm that I have described here. There are all various ways just of initializing the starting weights for the neural network. This code that I have here is going to train an exclusive OR neural network. Exclusive OR is a logic gate that is essentially true if its two inputs are different and false if its two inputs are the same. So you can see the truth table somewhat encoded here. 0, 0, they're the same, so that's false. These two in the middle are different, so they're true. And the one at the end is the same, so that is also false. We are going to run this neural network. It's just like the ones that we have seen before. It makes use of a rectified linear unit activation function, and it's pretty simple in structure. It's just got two hidden neurons on one single hidden layer. I am going to seed the random number generator. What that means is it will produce consistently random numbers. So the numbers that it generates are random, but each time that we run this, they'll be the same random numbers. That makes it a lot easier for my video to stay lined up still with the numbers that you're seeing here, because I want them to stay aligned. Then we're going to train it using similar code that we've seen before, and it will train, train, train until the loss drops. It's doing actually a fixed number of epochs. And it will rerun if the error rate is not what we like, which would mean that you're using random weights. You probably took out the seed, so whatever seed you had was probably bad, which you never know until you try it, and it would just reinitialize and rerun. So PyTorch gives you a number of functions that you can make use of to probe into the neural network. We are making use of the model children, which is going to return the actual layers. We're enumerating it so that we have the layer number as well. And then we get access to the actual neurons and bias neurons, which are handled separately. And we simply print out the values for the biases and the values for the weights. You can see the output from it here. This should stay the same since it's seeded. You can see that the bias in the first layer, connection to the uh, hidden layer, the numbers here, and then you can see the individual weights. Let's plot this all on a graph so that we can actually calculate it. The neural network has two input neurons. Inputs 0 and 1. I am labeling them starting at 0. And the input layer also has a bias neuron. The first hidden layer and the only hidden layer has two hidden neurons, hidden 1 and hidden 2. And the output and that second hidden layer also has a bias neuron. The final output neuron is going to give it the appropriate output, the zero or the one, or at least close to. And it, it does not have a bias neuron. You don't put bias neurons on output layers. Now the input layer and the first hidden layer are fully connected, including the biases. The hidden layer to the output layer is fully connected, including the bias lengths. We'll put in the actual numbers from the output that we saw from the program generated and actually trained by PyTorch. 
Now let's do some calculations and see if we can come up with the same sort of number that PyTorch would actually give. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calculate the hidden sum of hidden neuron zero. Well, it's got three inputs, two from the input neurons, and then the bias. This is just a weighted sum of all three of these. The weight on the bias is simply one, so it is added to this summation. We also calculate hidden neuron one, and we do this by multiplying the weights for the same three previous neurons but they're different weights because it's a fully connected layer and the input, the two input neurons and the bias all have separate weights going to that next layer. Now we've calculated the two values for the two hidden neurons. We have to also apply the rectified linear unit to this. This is simply a max of zero or the sum. So we apply the max to each of these, and we have the final two values for those two hidden neurons. Those two values that we calculated with the rectified linear unit, they are then passed onto the final hidden neuron along with the bias value. So we multiply the first hidden value times its weight, the second hidden value times its weight, and we add in the bias, technically the bias times one, but it's just the bias, and that gives us the final output. There is no activation function here, so that is truly just the final output. Thanks for watching this video, and please like and subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss anything in this course. And thank you to all the Patreon and YouTube members for your support. It's very much appreciated.